friends i am dr pooja garg associate professor of psychology in the department of humanities and social sciences at iit roorkee i will be running a course in the field of psychology titled group dynamics run under nptel ministry of education this course comprises of eight modules run over eight weeks so this course is for ug students coming from different backgrounds like engineering sciences natural sciences management and social science background this course is very useful for management professionals industry professionals healthcare professionals and management professionals so before starting the discussion further i would like to give an overview of this course that what this course deals about so the course title group dynamics deals about the group behavior or understanding the behavior of the members of the group what is the purpose that a person or an individual joins a group how the group is structured what are the various process that undertakes within the group or between the group that is intergroup and intergroup processes how the conflicts can be resolved within the group what is the process of formation of groups how behavior can be influenced based on various tasks or techniques what are the leadership styles that helps a group to perform and function better and reach the common goal so coming to the more details of this course i will start with the first module of this course is that is introduction to groups this section will deal about that what is a group how group can be defined what are the process and structures of the group different kinds of groups how a group is formed what are the process that an individual goes through when a group is formed and at the same time what are the different kinds of groups that are being formed at various levels at the individual level organizational level or even at behavioral level which means that there are certain groups which work to help individuals to overcome their psychological problems as well so coming to the main point that how we can define a group let us start with the first slide that is introduction to groups so when we talk about group dynamics definitely we are talking about groups so we can define group dynamics as a system of behaviors and psychological process occurring within groups that is intra groups and between groups that is inter groups that means when we are talking about group dynamics it is not only about within the group itself it is also about how to deal with the other groups that exist within an organization or society so group dynamics is actually is referred to a system a set of system that how we interact with each other and understand behavior of the other groups at the same time so it can be useful in understanding decision making procedures attitudes opinions beliefs values interrelationships discrimination communication perceptions and attributions so these are the aspects different aspects of group dynamics that we are going to cover in further discussions that how group behavior is classified or it can be understood on this various aspects of human behavior so kurt levin was the first person who popularized this term group dynamics and he gave a very normative view that describes that how a group is formed what are the process of the groups how they function and influence other members of the groups and how members of the group try to function based on the designated common goal so kurt levin was the first person who popularized this term and emphasized much more on democratic leadership styles participation of an individual based on cooperation and at the same time competition interrelationships conflicts and various types of process such as attraction social relationships 
conflict resolution, communication, conformity, deviance, and most importantly, group therapy. As just now I said that when we talk, when we will talk about various kinds of groups, then definitely we are going to talk about some different groups which on, not only talk about individual functioning or group functioning or organizational function functioning it actually talks also about individual behavior to deal or cope up with different kind of psychological problems so coming to defining the groups so a very layman understanding is that when two or more than two people come together to achieve a common goal then it is formed or it is defined as a group but the most important part to define a group is that what are the characteristics of a group no doubt people have a common group sorry common goal but at the same time how they come together and on what basis so when people tend to interact with each other they try to interact they try to express their desires their motives and when they reach a common goal and motives then ultimately they are motivating each other they are stimulating each other there is a common platform with common views shared goals ideas and values and beliefs and that point is a point where the exact formation of group process starts on so when we are defining that what is a group it can be defined as when two or more than two people come together with common objectives who are stimulating to each other have common loyalty participate in common activities and have a recognized structure just to reach the goal they have to have recognized structure and at the same time structured interaction because the goal is common so the most important characteristic of any group is that it's it's the most important characteristics is that definitely group goal is common but on pa- on top of it the members are interdependent and they share a structured interaction and at the same time they are very much interactive with each other so this is how a group can be defined so a group can ref- can be referred to as an organized system of two or more people who have a common meaning and evaluation of themselves and come together to achieve a common goal the next question is that why people join groups no doubt people have common objective but at the same time there are some psychological insecurities some threats a person confronts in day to day life and when the person tries to strive in that threatening environment the person wants to affiliate to some or the other person or group so there are several reasons that why a person joins group so some reasons have been consolidated under certain headings that the first reason that why a person joins group is security that means by joining any group an individual feels secured he feels safe from the external threats and dangers and he can reduce the insecurity of being standing alone definitely when the partner is there when a coworker is there a colleague is there a member is there then we feel more secure so security is a foremost reason that why a person joins group the second is status that means inclusion of a group in a group that is viewed as important provides recognition and status for its members definitely when any group which has high performance ratings which is functioning very well that have achieved high targets in a very collective and organized fashion then definitely the group receives lot of recognition and acknowledgement that recognition recognition and acknowledgement becomes an attraction to the other person and has a motivation to join a particular group because that group will give that person status a standing where he or she can affiliate so status is also the second reason that why a person joins group the other third reason is self esteem that means groups can provide people with feelings of self worth when the person is joining any group he has certain skills knowledge and abilities how to unleash those knowledge skills and abilities how to develop some more knowledge skin and abilities and getting a platform to learn more or enhance his personality and behavior or any aptitude or ability then it enhances an individual's self esteem this adds more weightage to an individual's self worth so self esteem is a major 
reason that why a person joins group the another reason is affiliation group can fulfill social needs we all are human beings every individual is a social animal person wants to affiliate with another in exchange of affection in exchange of companionship everybody requires this basic need to satisfy this basic need people have a desire to affiliate with the other group or other person so when group is being formed or any group that exists the person has a strong need and desire to satisfy the sense of belongingness so affiliation is the major reason that why a person joins group to affiliate with one another to satisfy the social needs of an individual the other is power when majority is there definitely power is there sometimes there are situations in life in any organization or as well that people find it difficult or almost impossible to achieve a certain goal to achieve that goal a person joins any group where there is more power there is more support and that power gives more self esteem worth affiliation and belongingness and security within that group so power is the main reason that why a person joins group that what cannot be achieved individually often becomes possible through group action there is power in numbers when there is more majority when there is more support in the group to achieve a particular goal then the person feels more secure more safe more less threatened and he is more motivated to perform well so power gaining power by joining any group is also a reason that why a person joins group next and the last is goal achievement not every person can achieve all the goals all alone but when people come together to achieve a common goal and between that process the person also achieves some small small individual goals so goal achievement is the main reason that when a person accomplish a particular task then there is a pool of talent that people come together and they try to complete that in a very orderly fashion and to complete that job when people are investing all their time energy knowledge skills and abilities then there is a formation or structure of a group that is a formal structure which helps a person to achieve a common goal so this is these are the reasons that why a person joins group that is security status self esteem affiliation power and goal achievement now based on these reasons only there can be a number of types of groups it can be informal it can be formal it can be any social group it can be any religious group it can be any psychological group or group work where the person is able he is receiving a platform to satisfy his own needs to develop his own abilities and more importantly to resolve his day to day life conflicts at the same time so there are several reasons that why a person joins group now when we're talking about that why people join groups some theories have been propounded which gives us enough explanation that there can be several reasons that why a person joins group just now we have just discussed in a very brief manner that these are the reasons but apart from these reasons reason, some uh, psych- uh, psychologists have identified certain theories that there are certain factors that forces a person to join a group or automatically it becomes a natural process sometimes it is geographical location or physical proximity that makes a person to join a group sometimes it is similarity in attitudes beliefs and ideas that people join group and they are attracted to each other sometimes people uh, join groups because there is some reward cost outcome incurred in that process of interaction and people join groups and sometimes there are other psychological reasons that why a person joins group so if we talk about the theories that explain why people join group there are four theories which we can discuss right now the first is propinquity theory the second is exchange theory the third is balance theory and the fourth is humans theory so let us first discuss about propinquity theory now this theory emphasizes that individuals affiliate with one another because of spatial or geographical location for example in any organization when employees are sitting next to each other with within very within proximity or they very close to each other then they have more 
chances to interact with each other the interactions are very frequent and then they tend to form a group so geographical or uh, physical proximity is one of the main reason that why people join group so this theory emphasizes that individuals affiliate with one another because of spatial or geographical proximity for example in an organization employees who work in the same area of the plant or office or managers with offices close to one another would more probably form into groups that is so natural but yes this is a natural process but at the same time this becomes a very strong reason that why a person joins group it can be even in in small classrooms when students are sitting next to each other they are more close to each other they get more chances to interact with each other in day to day life in school life and they form a group because there is more sharing of ideas more sharing of emotions more sharing of values so propagandy theory is one theory that explains that why people join groups the other is exchange theory this is completely based on reward cost outcome that when we are interacting with the other person then there is some exchange of ideas and at the same time there is sharing of emotions beliefs and values so when we are exchanging or we are interacting with the other person then there is more sharing there are more interactions there is more sharing of sentiments and emotions so the cost so reward is that we are sharing and the, if we are not sharing our emotions then there is our outcome can be or cost that the person incurs can be negative in form of psychological problems because when there is no sharing there is more frustration there is more anger there is more fatigue so according to exchange theory this theory is based on reward cost outcome of interactions that when you are interacting with the other person it is not only reward then you are paying the cost of that interaction at the same time that is rewards from interactions gratify needs needs gratify needs in form of social needs in form of knowledge skills abilities emotions sentiments values and beliefs while cost incur anxiety frustration or fatigue because when there is no sharing then there there can be some psychological impact because we are isolated we are alienated so to maintain that kind of psychological balance within oneself then that exchange is very important so therefore propinquity interaction and common attitudes all have a significant role in exchange theory even when two people sitting close to each other and not interacting that in that case also people can pay the cost because there is no sharing there is no gratification of need at any any level whether it is individual it is uh, organizational or psychological so when we talk about exchange theory it is a reward cost outcome of interactions the third is balance theory this theory was developed by theodore newcomb and stated that people are attracted to one another on the basis of similar attitude and commonly relevant objects and goals that means when two people who have common attitudes values beliefs and ideas they are attracted to each other this is so natural right and when people are attracted to each other it can be two people or more than two people and they form a group now at in this theory the formation of group based on similarity is not the end thing this theory ex- extends further that once the group is formed based on similarities then it becomes a foremost responsibility of all the group members to maintain that balance based on similarities and if the group fails to maintain that balance then again members make an effort to restore that balance so that the group can function effectively but there are instances sometimes the conflicts get increased or aggravates and people tend to maintain that balance and in that case the group sometimes ceases to exist so when we talk about balance theory maintaining balance is the most important thing coming together is easy but maintaining that balance based on similarity is more of a responsible action that every member have has to execute when the group is functional else the group either can lose that balance and become imbalanced restore it and sometimes the group fails to restore that balance and the group ceases to exist 
and the last is Homan's theory. This theory was developed by George C. Homan. According to Homan, a more comprehensive theory of group formation comes from the theory based on activ activities, interactions, and sentiments. These three elements are related to one another. Why? Because when there there are more activities within the group, then there is more interaction. then there is more sharing of knowledge there is more sharing of information sharing there is more sharing of abilities or developing abilities and skills and when the activities become more focused or more dominant then the person become attached to that activity to that task and the members and the sentiments also get affected so according to homan when a when the three factors activities interactions and sentiments come together then the group up is being formed and other members also get attracted to each other because there is more activity there is more more result oriented tasks that has been performed within the group members sorry uh, performed by the group members and there is more interaction so that's the major element to interaction as persons in the group interact with one another not just in physical propinquity but also to accomplish group goals such as cooperation and problem solving because when sentiments are involved in any group functioning then definitely problems can arise and at the same time problems has to be resolved and there can there has to be more cooperation because there can be conflict and that conflict can be only be released re erased when there is more cooperation next comes stages of group development this is the most important part of group dynamics when we talk about that how groups group is being formed it is not a very immediate process that people come together with a common purpose and they start functioning no every member who or members when come together for a common purpose or co ob common objective then every group and every member within that group has to undergo a process which helps a group to stabilize based on their efficiency effectiveness and at the same time based on the functionality of that group so when we are talking about that how the group is developed then we have to talk about the stages of group development that every group undergoes five stages of development which makes a group extremely stable and functional so this process is divided into five steps forming storming norming performing and adjourning so forming is the first stage where members are well acquainted they know the members superficially but at the same time they will not accept the other member as a member of the group and they are very much considering themselves as an individual not as a complete group so when you are talking about the first stage of the group development forming the group members are well acquainted and established ground rules formalities are preserved and members are treated as strangers group rules are also there that this is how we will function because we have a common objective but still people are very rigid in their own way because they are not flexible they have a common objective in the mind but they have lot of inflexibility in their behavior that how to accommodate the other member and how to adjust within that group group itself so forming is a first stage which is very much formal in its own way when people are acquainted but at the same time they are not connected to each other but they are establishing the ground rules that how the group will function so there it takes lot of time for all the group members to accept each other as a member and at the same time understand the ground rules that how the group will function now once this stage is over that is the forming stage is over the members reaches a second stage that is the storming because ground rules have been set people have lot of identity crisis at the same time because they want to establish their own identity and and at the same time they the members have to accommodate within the group members also so at this stage members communicate their feelings but still view themselves as an individuals rather than part of the group they resist the control by group leader and show hostility towards other members ground rules are there but who will monitor the funct functioning of the group who will monitor the ground rules that whether 
whether and how the ground rules have to be established and followed there has to be a group leader now group leader is there but the other members sometimes exhibit lot of hostility and aggression to accept the leadership so in this stage there are conflicts in this stage there are clashes the group le leader is being resisted by the other members because every member is striving to establish their own identity and at the same time they also go through a sort of pressure that they have to accommodate within the group itself so there is lot of turmoil in the second stage of group development that is storming but there is a point when members tend to understand that if they have to reach the common goal then they have to accept the leader they have to accept the ground rules and they have to accept that accommodation is required to become a part of the group rather than individual so after forming once storming is also also being crossed the group reaches the third stage of norming this is the this is the stage when people accept the ground rules that how they will be followed they establish the norms they establish the roles they establish the duties and responsibilities that who will perform what and based on those rules and regulations the group tend to reach a stage when they are accepting everything the, along with the leadership style and they are functioning at that stage so norming is a stage where people feel part of the group they realize that they can achieve the goal if they accept other viewpoints and norms regarding group functionality that means how the group will process based on norms rules responsibilities and duties once the norms are being established the group reaches the stage of performing this is the stage which is very important when we talk about group process because once the ground rules norms have been established the only thing that is more important at this this stage is that to what extent members are trusting each other to what extent uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, to what extent uh, members are following the leaders so there has to be more flexibility in the atmosphere in the environment and hierarchy is of little importance so when we when we are talking about the performing stage of group development the group work the group works in an open and trusting atmosphere where flexibility in is the key and hierarchy is of little importance and leadership is is of high significance because the leader plays a major role because the leader assigns roles duties responsibilities and establish the norms that what is to be done and what not ought to be done so performing is is, is the stage where the group becomes highly functional but this group this stage can only be reached when members are flexible they accept themselves as part of the group not as an individual and work coherently to reach the common goal now once the group performs in a very effective and efficient manner the group tends to reach the goal and once the group reaches the goal it reaches the stage of adjourning that means the group conducts an assessment of the year and implements a plan for transitioning roles and recognizing members contribution and once the group goal is achieved the group tends to disband that means the once the objective is achieved by the group members of group members are achieved the performance of every member is assessed members are being rewarded for their performance the group also being assessed based on their performance and to what extent they have received or reached a status and have received the recognition and acknowledgement for their performance and once the group reaches the stage of group uh, uh, group succession or uh, reaches the stage of completion then the members tend to disband and they have another desire to join another group so this stage of group development that is forming storming norming performing and adjourning these five stages play a major role when we are establishing a group because group members need to shape their or modify their behavior to a larger extent because lot of flexibility lot of modification is required lot of shaping shaping of behavior is required to form a group and to function within the group itself so these these are the stages of group development which every group goes through each and every stage and helps the group 
to be more successful in their performance so i will stop here and we will continue this discussion in the second lecture thank you